All right, so today we are going to be watching the commentary for Spy Kids 3D Game Over. So uh, I haven't seen this movie since I was a kid, and obviously it's become, you know, a pretty big meme after that. I feel like the commentary for this one might not be as, like, bad as, like, the, the last one we did, Cat in the Hat, because I've, I've heard that, you know, Robert Rodriguez is actually a pretty esteemed director. You know, he still puts a lot of effort into the Spy Kids movies, even though, you know, they look kind of... But he, he's made them for his kids. Um, to my understanding, same with Shark Boy and Lava Girl, which we might do later, uh, seeing how this one goes, so... I'm assuming this one will be more laid back, maybe less uh, off the cuff and strange, but I feel like it might still be pretty interesting, so let's get right into it. All right, and of course, uh, this one markets the whole 3D, 3D thing, even though it's just the crappy, like, I don't remember the specific type, it's just, you know, the red and blue. This one is the normal version, of course. Wouldn't want to put you all through that, so let's get right into it. Epic animation. Hello, this is Robert Rodriguez. Welcome Hello. back to the final Spy Kids movie. Oh, yeah, because I guess they, they weren't planning on making that fourth one that came out in like 2011 after this, so he thinks it's the final one, but it's not. ...able to shoot this much more like an independent film, and I'll explain more about that later. Oh, yeah, yeah. But when I think indie film, I think Spy Kids 3D game over. He can wear his private eye trench coat and not look, you know, out of place. Uh, you know, like at a water park where, you know, you go swimming. I feel like it might be like a little bit out of place compared to like, you know, bathing suits, but whatever. This is a cathedral of junk someone built in their backyard in Austin. Actually, that's the inside of my closet. Uh, I didn't know that they filmed in there. Coming up is nothing. There was a scene <laughs> that was going to go here. Coming up is nothing. That when he pulls grandpa into the game, it makes sense. And he's not just mentioning the toy maker for the first time when grandpa lands on the moon as it does now which ends up if i had ten dollars for every time i heard the sentence when grandpa lands on the moon i'd have a uh, ten dollars george guess what you're in uh spy kids 3 he said i am I said, yeah you play the president when can you film i said yeah i'll just show up to your house and i'll bring my hd camera park it there in your living room i told him you didn't even have to wear pants because it's going to be from the neck up all i have to do is wear a jacket and tie so sure enough i go over there and uh, comes down in his pajama pants to complete the joke that's pretty great i'm sure as an actor that would be like the dream gig i loved games growing up as well that was kind of where i got the idea so when it came time to show the effects of the game i had to put my son in because whenever he's playing he gets so engrossed in the game man they should have had robert rodriguez direct like I mean, I don't know if he even wanted to, but at least, you know, asked him if he wanted to do like some of those modern video game movies like Pixels. I'm sure he probably would have made Pixels, you know, at least better than what it was. And especially Ready Player One, maybe he would have been better at that. I don't know. I don't know. All speculation. Just throwing that out there. And my kids were the, the luckiest kids in the world because I had to buy every game console and video game out there um, to research the movie. And I, I can't sit there and play them all, so I would let them play them. And I would remind them, look, not every kid gets to play. God, that must be amazing as a kid. His kids must be so well off. It's set in a video game world and you can get away with it. So I told him. Is he flipping off the camera? <laughs> so actually a lot of these shots in this level in particular you'll see are, are different from what you might have seen in the theater because we didn't finish it in time. And uh, what I did was record a line of Junie saying, uh, low res. So in case we ever came up across a scene that just was not going to be finished out, he could simply comment on the low res nature. That's, that's pretty good. I'm sure there aren't too many movies that have done that, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> And coming up with the action for each level, that was the toughest thing was, I wanted this movie to be a true video game experience. And video games, if you've ever played them, are super cool, wild, and inventive. I didn't want anyone to say, you had the chance to go in a game and you didn't do anything cool with it. Yes, I'm glad, I'm glad he says that. I feel like so many adults, especially of, of this, this era in the early 2000s, probably didn't really look at video games as like pieces of art, but it really seems like Robert Rodriguez does, so good for him making DVDs, you lose a lot of detail. Even though DVD is a digital format, it really is so compressed and so low resolution. It compared to HD, which I'm actually watching right now, and so this looks amazing. So unless you come to my house or wait till HD DVDs come out, you won't even get to Oh yeah, HD DVDs. Those are definitely still a thing. And yes, I would love to come to your house, Robert Rodriguez, please. Hopefully, 
things will change soon. But until people get out there and really see what high definition offers, they're not gonna know what- Oh, don't worry. Things will definitely change soon. <laughs> wanted to have a level that was sort of mech robots type genre. Oh, heck yeah. This is the original Pacific Rim. Where the programmers show up. And then we'll go to a cyber battle where people where they're fighting up in the sky. There's a lot of falling in games where you're up in the sky and oh my god, that crowd. I didn't realize that they made the crowd look like that. That's very accurate, but also horrifying. So when you have a kid on top of a giant robot like that, that's great role playing. And that's the reason I keep zooming in and out. Because if you just stay in a wide shot, it's just two big robots fighting. So I had to keep pushing in, constantly reminding that a character was operating this robot so that you could keep projecting yourself as being the operator or just being able to see your character. That's a really good point, actually. I feel like it does make the scene more dynamic and interesting, like showing the character a bit more and zooming in other than just being like, you know, wide shot, wide shot, like it was mentioning, all that kind of stuff. I feel like it is making it more interesting. Okay, we're in the middle of the Meg Racer scene, and uh, this is actually my kid's favorite scene. The second favorite is the robot scene. <laughs> I'm glad he knows which ones are his kid's favorites. That's sweet. The score to them in the car all the time, because they like imagining the uh, the action, which isn't so bad, because at least I don't have to listen to Disney tunes. But there's a lot of violence, actually. The kids get pretty beat up, and you see people wiping out, and... And, I, and you get away with it because it's a video game and the worst thing that happens to them is they just lose a life. So they actually, each kid gets killed several several times in the movie. <laughs> That's a funny way of looking at it. I mean, he's not wrong. Um. 3D goodness was always the, the term we used on, on set. Got to design each shot so that things are always coming at the camera. People are always flipping out towards them or sparks are flying into the camera or as you'll see, uh, Scissors will come out and snap in front of the camera lens and then the bike will come hurtling into the into the viewer's face. That is kind of funny that he calls it 3D goodness because I mean that's exactly what like I'd probably think that it'd be called. <laughs> it is kind of interesting how he does mention that he does make everything like trying to pop out of the camera and he's right like there's quite a lot of stuff it's, it's if you ask me it's kind of gimmicky. But I mean, that's what he was going for, and you know, the targeted audience is for children, so I mean, I feel like that's exactly why so many kids enjoyed this. I mean, I enjoyed this as a kid. I mean, it appeals directly to that, so I mean, yet another reason why I think Robert Rodriguez has definitely earned a title of Master Filmmaker. He can appeal to audiences and kids in their own, like, completely different ways, but pretty well, so kudos to him for that. And uh, this too was done in a way where they could both be on the set at the same time. We're actually lowering him in his wheelchair, and he's actually there talking to Judy, but uh, the body movements are put in later. And also, like, that is just so cool that, like, he's just in a wheelchair this whole time, but he's still as a part in this movie. There are definitely not many movies that give opportunity to physically disabled people like that. So I think that's really cool that they still gave him a pretty big part and, you know, just gave him a whole CG body and that kind of thing. That's just pretty cool. For when we do screen it in a polarized situation. In fact, I know T.I. is working wow, on it. Wow, it also does not look like he's holding that card. <laughs> Any new technology that comes along that allows you to tell stories better and I think I can point to people at Pixar, I think are making some of the best movies out there, story-wise. Yes! If only he knew what movies would come after this, like Wall-E and that kind of thing. wall -E's actually like one of my favorite movies in general, so uh, Past Robert has a lot to look forward to. And I, I really think people get confused because they tell me, they say, yeah, but film is so organic and the old technologies are organic. It's like, what? What are you talking about? It doesn't grow on trees. There's nothing organic about it. It's such an old technology, you forget that it is a technology. You should question tradition. And I've told the story, I think, on the Spy Kids do this, but I'll tell it again because people like it and and it points about tradition and why you should question it. What he's talking about is actually pretty interesting because, uh, to my knowledge, Robert Rodriguez's past movie, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, which came out in like 2001, I think, is actually one of the first um, Hollywood uh, big budget movies to be shot digitally versus on film and you know digitally is just you know just the camera that I'm shooting this on right now but you know theirs was obviously different and you know he's talking about the comparisons between you know classic film strips to just digital and I think that's really interesting a good reminder 
of the past, I guess, and how much further camera technology has come since then. You know, obviously we have digital cameras on our phones that are just so good. Oh, got to mention something funny here. This music coming up, as a matter of fact, isn't even from this movie. I wrote this for Once Upon a Time in Mexico. All I did was I, I kept the orchestra, but I changed the guitar line so that it reflected the Spy Kids theme and not the Mexico theme. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I just mentioned that movie, Lamau. Those Tinker Toys actually followed them into the lava and became these sort of lava chodes. Lava chodes? Okay, <laughs> interesting. This sequence was saved near the end, so we really cut back visually and made it uh, more texture mapped and feeling like sort of a lower budget game. Uh, and design-wise, see those textures. I wanted it really to go cheesy, very simple textures on the ground. I feel like that would have worked better maybe if you like had plot devices to like separate them from like being in like, oh, this is the, the new portion of the game versus the old portion of the game. Cause like, I don't know, just without having heard his commentary, it just like, just looks bad, but like he's kind of making it sound like he made it bad on purpose. But like, I don't know, it'd be hard for anyone to really know that without hearing him say that I feel. Elijah's actually looking at the ground. That's how tall I made him seem so that he would just be towering over the children. And here comes a, a Lord of the Rings shot where now, you know, they're the hobbits looking up at him. Oh, that's genius. That is oh, so many levels of cinema there. God damn. Cake. Great line reading. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> there he is, minion with his same head from Spy Kids. We just kept all this stuff in our... Oh my God, it's Monk from Monk. Do you think he's going to be a Monk? Maybe they got a script, but it's... Gosh, it's got a lot of effects in it, and they just think it's gonna be a big hassle. Well, if you learn the base. Oh, God. No! If either one of you little boogers is listening to this, your papi misses you. So, take care. <laughs> Thank you all for listening, and uh, good luck. Be creative. Coming back. So that was the commentary for Spy Kids 3D Game Over. Uh, kind of what I expected, just, uh, you know, Robert Rodriguez has a huge background. That he's directed a lot of great movies and is behind, behind a lot of great movies. A lot of very technical talk, uh, not as much off the rails as I would have hoped, but you know. <laughs> Robert Rodriguez. Um, still some fun parts though. Robert Rodriguez really does know how to make kids films specifically tailored towards like little kids. He's he's done a really good job on that and I can see you know being someone who grew up during that generation seeing myself and like other people my age who enjoyed those movies as a kid you know it's pretty obvious to see why they would just because you know there's a lot of visual eye candy and you know fun ideas and that kind of thing so kudos to robert rodriguez for doing that for everyone thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one and uh, yeah